Hello and welcome to an interview with Harvard Steen. Now, Harvard is the director who directed the short film. And if you haven't seen that film, click right up there and you get to watch the film. So let's find out more about Howard. Um, when did you get into filmmaking? And is it ever since oh, you were a kid? Ever since I was a kid. Wow. When I was at school, uh, we had a little eight millimeter. That's like a a tourist movie camera okay. which we could afford yeah and the film was four minutes it was a four minute movie because the reel lasted four minutes oh, okay okay so we had to be inventive because it cost a lot of money to purchase right. four minutes yeah. spool of film and there's no cutting if you make a mistake or whatever that's it then it was just too bad right and we used to do it in school they let us run around the school corridor on the trains people didn't we had uh, trick photography oh. with, 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 with a wizard that disappeared and wow. we had great fun wow and it, you know it, it was all to do with whatever you could dream up mm -hmm. yeah and that's the beauty of cinema mm -hmm. because the imagination is your only limit anything you can do absolutely anything if you can imagine it Someone said that, isn't it? But was it Walt Disney or someone who said something like this? There's nothing new about it. It's always been the case, and it's yeah. always been the case because before uh, cinema came, the theatre, mm -hmm. and in the theatre, anything you can imagine, and that goes right back to the ancient Roman and Greek times. Theatres and plays have always been with us mm -hmm. because you could anything you could imagine, you could try to depict it on a stage. Yeah, and it's all to do with the thought process of the person who wrote it, and if you can bring the audience along with you and share that, mm -hmm. that's the magic of it. Well, wise words. <laughs> <laughs> if, but, you, if you can. But uh, I, I don't think they know, they just know you as the director, but this is not your full-time job, is it? It's a great hobby. Yeah, yeah, so you're a hobbyist and you're so good, but what is your full-time job? Dentist. There we go. So, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so you've been doing that ever since what? Uh, you got out of like medical school or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, that's, that's a long time now and I'm still still involved in it. Daytime and, job. And you have uh, done a lot of celebrities. I have the... looked after people, the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. <laughs> Modesty forbids me for mentioning the names of the people that you might have seen on the screen. Yes. Some yes. of which um, don't mind showing them off and others would rather be discreet about right. it. Right, okay, okay. A bit like the person who goes in for plastic surgery yeah. is going to tell everybody what they've just had done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All they want is a good result. Yeah, true. So how did you decide to create this film called Illusions? You see, I've always thought if you pick a medium, which is my one, black and white film, um, it's restrictive in the sense that unlike video, there's lots of things you can't do. Mm -hmm. You can't quickly edit things, you can't add things, you can't modify it. So I've decided to turn an inherent weakness into a strength. Okay. Because when the medium you have has restrictions on what you can do, then you just have to think more clearly to overcome them. And after all, it's the message that you're putting across what's yeah. inside the film. So you spend more time planning it and less time shooting it. Mm. Yeah, and that, that's the difference comes there in what comes before you make the film mm -hmm. because all the films I have made may well have sound effects but none of them have dialogue right right and that goes right back to the original days of movies when they were just silent films with maybe a piano accompaniment oh. because Talking hadn't been invented, sound hadn't been invented. Of course, of course. It was just moving pictures, and people, the wonderment of it was so great that people didn't think if sound was at all necessary. Mm. But then talkies came along, and people started talking on the screen, mm. and with the rush to get into that, a lot of the others got left behind. Mm. But even today, and I never cease to be amazed, if you watch a really good action thriller, a bit of Hitchcock, North by North, Whenever the serious moment comes, the talking stops. Yeah. And then you just have the action. Right. Cary Grant in with the crop sprayer and the trying to kill him by the air. There's no talking. Right. It's just action. Mm. And so many when you see a good piece of cinema, they're not talking. The things are happening. 
There may be a musical accompaniment, mm -hmm. there may be sound effects, but the yapping stops because that takes away from the power of the medium. So the purest form of cinema is action. Right. But you need to have some sort of sound design in the background, isn't it? Sounds are oh. great, you can add them in now. Okay. Uh, but that, my ones are all done post-production. Right. Yes. So when it's filmed, it's just filmed on a, one of those simple cameras that I showed, and there's no sound attached to it. You've mm. got a silent film. Then comes the genius of the sound engineers, of which I have two. Okay. And they use all their computers and magic right. to add in, so. and it comes in layers. Mm. The sound is just not one continuous thing. There's one film of sound. There's another piece of sound on top of it for something else. Mm. And the whole thing is, if it's done well, I just involve the audience much more. Yeah. That's the modern sound. So mm. I don't mind adding that into a traditional film. Yeah. We nearly spent about a year doing that. You know, if you haven't seen the vlog, um, sh go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. You can see all the hard work that went in behind the scenes of filming this. But also, you had something totally different in mind at first, and then because of the whole lockdown situation that we were in, that is the film true. actually changed. That is true. Um, because of the amount of time in creating the magical aspect, uh, events of life overtook us. Mm, yeah. Then um, there was this magical light bulb moment when I realised that all this could be uh, was working towards something was actually happening in our real lives. Yeah. And we had the makings of something more interesting. Mm. And the other thing is, a short film is not short. Um, just because you've got nothing to say. It's short because you can condense the message. There's a lot of content, I would mm -hmm. say. And if it's powerful enough, the audience comes away with what you wanted to show them, the idea right. you wanted to share. It doesn't have to take an hour and a half to do that. Mm -hmm. You want somebody to be, oh, they've got their life to lead. Are you going to drag them away into a dark room for a long time? to give them a very quick message. Mm -hmm. Let them have their message and get on with their lives. Right. And maybe if they're interested enough, see it again. So the message is very important with that. Now, sometimes with films, a lot of people have, or oh, they take away something totally different when they come and see a film. What do you think you're, well, what, what are you trying to show with the message? Just in case someone doesn't get it. I know it's pretty obvious what's happening, but. In case they don't get yeah. it, uh, the message that I want to, um, uh, put across is that we are in a very special time now in the evolution of our species and we're coming through a terrible plague but we're not at the end of it mm -hmm. we're in it we don't know how far in it we are we think it'll oh it'll be over by Christmas well it won't be over by Christmas this thing's going around the whole globe and will continue yeah. and it will cause pandemonium and ups and downs and there could be all kinds of consequences we can only even dream of Governments could fall, autocracies could flourish, companies could go out of business and will, economies can crash. We don't know what the result is, mm. but this is a warning. This little film is a warning to prepare ourselves because something unexpected may happen and it might not be very nice. So True. this little film is just a warning. Okay. To be prepared. So if somebody wants to learn your type of filmmaking that you do, which is black and white and, and old school kind of uh, film equipment, where could they purchase this or where could they learn something like this? You can purchase the equipment. You can go onto eBay, which is what I've done many times, okay. and just click 16mm cine camera. Okay. And it'll drop down all kinds of goods. Uh, but then, of course, you have to have a little bit of knowledge to what you're buying. Yeah. Then you have to work out how to use it. And people do go to film school. Okay. I never had that privilege, but there are film schools in here, or you can't go abroad at the moment. Mm -hmm. And in film school, I believe they still start with um, traditional, authentic film. And then they will move on. Like if someone's studying photography, they'll start off with a film camera and a darkroom so they understand the, the basics the basics of how photography works then they'll move on to digital okay and i think that's quite the right thing to do mm -hmm. this is the film that you want to take with you uh, to the Cannes film festivals 
So how do you go about doing this? Do you have contacts there that you... Well, when, okay, there's another big subject. Right. If you want to um, enter your film for a film festival, uh, they are what they call the indie film festival. Indie mm -hmm. as is independent. Independent films, yeah. So I'm an independent filmmaker. Okay. And there are many, many talented people around the globe, in and not just with this, but with digital and the most modern media. And people that make, anyone who has um, a digital camera that can do video can make a film. Right. So they, they're flourishing. There are film societies, mm -hmm. there are film... Um, places where you can enter for competitions okay. and it's all online and they're all over the world okay. and you have to meet the criteria, right. you enter it, you send it in, you may or may not be selected to be a finalist mm -hmm. and when the jolly old virus is conquered hopefully the cinemas reopen and I was fortunate with a previous effort it was shown at the Prince Charles Leicester Square wow. at the Euro Shorts Film Festival. Wow! And you have your film and all the other finalists, and you see and you see what clever, talented people they are on so many different subjects. You yeah. couldn't believe what people pick to make a film about. Wow! So the first thing is having an idea, and then using your talent or the tools to create and exactly the yeah. idea comes first. Yeah. Without that. It's yeah. just a piece of equipment. Yeah, the idea, the message, and then your story. And so there's so much more going in this than just filming, pressing record, you know? Because uh, I always tell my audience, uh, you know, get out there and film yourself. Don't don't just sit at home and do nothing. You know, you 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 learn magic. You know what? Press record. Always hit record. Start start. The hitting. it's there is it's limitless. Yeah. And it depends how much you put to put into it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's that's the magic of it. Yeah, there you are, magic. Yeah. Um, if you put a little in, you get a little out. Mm. Well, I think those are wise words of wisdom from Howard. So, uh, thank you, Howard, for doing this for us. I couldn't, uh, Brendan. I couldn't. I can't shake hands because we're not supposed to be doing yeah. these things. <laughs> yes. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, no, uh, it's all you, really. I I really didn't. Did, I I just came here. I did. Brendan's some stuff too modest as always. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have done it without him. It was a joint effort, and we're, I think we're pleased with what yes, we have. Yes, very pleased. Yeah. Um, and one last message. Yes. If it inspires anybody, yeah, to either make filming or to make magic, well, we've done our good deed. Yes. Yes. It's all about. I always tell my audience. It's all about inspiring you. So, and that's and that's what you're doing, and that's what I'm doing too. So great. I uh, hope you enjoy this little interview I did with Howard and uh, have a wonderful time wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.